Hello, in this presentation, we're going to set up inventory items within QuickBooks. Inventory items often having to do or principally dealing with, in this case, the types of inventory we will be dealing with types of guitars. Before we actually take a look at creating the items, first want to take a look at what we're trying to do here. I'm going to go to the company tab up top and we're going to open up the home tab if you do not have it open up yet at this time. And within the items, what we're really trying to do, what we're going to do mainly is going to set up the inventory items. Those are going to be some of the more complex things that we have to do. Once we set up the inventory items, in other words, we will be much better off and the next things we need to set up will be less complex. So if we have a create invoice, when we're going to invoice a client, say for a purchase, in this case of a guitar, if we open up the invoice, then that is where we're going to invoice the, the customer here. And we're going to have then an item here that says items. That's going to be the item list. That's what we need to put in place here. The items then will be calculated to have the rate and the amount that we will then charge and then the sales tax charged on that. Now we could, of course, create the items as we go. But this is typically something that we want to create before and then something that then can be set up. And every time someone opens up another invoice, they can just select the appropriate item and then the rate will be appear as it should. And the sales tax will then be calculated all as it should as we go. If we are able to get our items set up correctly, we'll have a drop down and we'll have our items here. All we have at this point then sales items, we're looking for those inventory items. So that's what we're going to work on now. We're going to try to set up a bunch at the same time. Again, if we had one item by one item, we could set up the items as we go. At this time, we're going to try to set up multiple items. We will set up multiple items at one time uh, in a kind of a bulk system. So let's see where to go in order to do that. The PowerPoint instructions or the uh, instructions in terms of PDF file says to go to lists, drop down, and then we're going to go to the items lists. You can also find it on the home tab, but I think this is the best way to go because it's going to be available no matter where you are at or what windows are open. So we're going to go to the lists drop down up at the top and we're going to go to the items or the items under the lists drop down. Now mine opened it up into the smaller window. I'm just going to maximize the window. Obviously we have multiple windows open at this time. We only have the three items. These are the default items that were put in place by the fact that we were a merchandising company with inventory. If we put our cursor right in the middle here, we can we can extend this cell. So not like that, but like that. Cursor doesn't look like that, but like that. Hold down left click and we can extend this cell to see more of these items. PDF instructions then say that we're gonna to go to items at the bottom and we're gonna to go to add items. So that's what we're gonna add. So at the items, this is kind of a drop up rather than a drop down. We're going to go to the items and then we're going to add items. So we're going to add item. We're going to add multiple items. So I'm going to go down to add, edit, multiple items. So add, edit, multiple items. And we're going to enter multiple items at the same time. We should see a screen such as this pop up. Once we are here, we have a couple different selections in terms of the types of items. That's going to be within the lists here. So what we want are the inventory items. We're going to start with service items. So we're going to select the drop down and we're going to look for service items as opposed to inventory part items. We're going to go service items. Next, what we're going to do is customize these columns. We want to have these columns to be customized to be as easy as possible to put in the data for multiple items that we will be inputting at this time. To do that, we're going to go up to the customize up top. So we're going to customize the columns. Once we have this, we're going to customize the columns in accordance with this list. So we have the name, the sales description, the purchase description, the sales price, income, account, uh, sales tax code. In order to do that, this is the full list on the left hand side and we want to pull those over into this list. Now, if the item is in this list and not over here, we will add it. If the item is over here, but not and we don't want it over here, <laughs> then we're going to remove it. And if we want to order these items, which we will, then we'll select the item and move them up or down with these toggle tags here. 
So we have starting off with the, the item name, then we're looking for the sales description. So I'm gonna see that over here. I'm gonna pull that over by saying add, and then move that up by saying we wanna move it right up until it's underneath the item name. Then we're looking for the purchase description that's not included in our chosen column. So we're gonna select it here and add, and then move it up. So we're gonna bring that up to our third item. And then we have the sales price. We have that here. I'm gonna go ahead and move that up one. Then we have the income account. Gonna move that up one. And then we have the sales tax code. I'm gonna move that up one. And I'm gonna remove then uh, this item here, not included in our list. This then will be the, the horizontal representation of the headers, item name, sales description, purchase description, sales price, income code, sales tax code so we'll say okay and there we have item name sales description purchase description sales price income tax account sales tax code now what i'm going to do i'm going to try to uh, maneuver the um, the size of the columns a bit so i'm going to make this one a bit larger and once again you want to be right on those three dots and then hold down the left click uh, the purchase description probably needs to be larger the sales price could probably be a bit smaller. And then the income tax uh, can probably be small and we have that uh, sales tax code. That should be good. Now we get to practice a bit of data entry here. So we're just gonna enter this data exactly as it's shown here on the PDF file. We're gonna enter the item name, the sales description, and then the sales price, the income tax account, and the sales code. Remember what we're entering our, our uh, service items related to basically a guitar shop. These are kind of some generic names, some of them, but uh, we're, we're looking to have some service items so we can practice both uh, service items in terms of invoicing and item lists for service companies, such as if we were a bookkeep, bookkeeping service or if we did any kind of service without inventory, a uh, repair shop or something like that. And then we also want to look at some of the inventory items so that we can get an idea of both of those items. So this is gonna be the service item list. So diagnostic, it's gonna be a diagnostic. So we're gonna say $68. I'm not sure <laughs> what exactly a diagnostic is on the guitar or exactly how much would be charged for that, but we're gonna have that item here. We've got uh, our service guitar, full service. We got the partial service guitar service, uh, 100 and the tune up. So that's what we're gonna be listing in terms of the service items available. Uh, the income tax is going to be here in terms of the income account. What that means is that when we record this, we're going to increase the income account of service. So that's our revenue account or our income account. The other side, of course, when we invoice will be accounts receivable. So the journal entry or the transaction when we use these items will typically be in the form of an invoice and it will debit the accounts receivable or increase the amount that people owe us and it will credit the sales or service income, which is a revenue or income account, increasing the income, increasing net income. And we're gonna say that the sales tax code will be just tax. So I'm gonna put this information into our uh, data on uh, QuickBooks. Note that as we enter this service data, we're actually gonna type in the word service here. And we're gonna to have to add this account because as the merchandising company, we didn't have this service account, the service income. So we're gonna select tab to set it up. It's gonna say, do you wanna set up? This is not on the list, set up. We're gonna set it up then. And we're gonna add this account. Now the account type will just be the default of income. That's correct. It's gonna be account name. We're just gonna keep it at service. And we're gonna keep everything else the same here. We're not gonna mess with the tax lines at this point. And we're going to say save and close and that service item once set up then will be what we're going to use all the way through all the rest of the items as we move forward okay so i think we have everything in there as we should according to the directions here just listing out the data input again the only thing other than just data input would be the service item one thing to note as you do data input within uh, Excel, I mean with <laughs> Excel too, but within QuickBooks and a lot of database programs, uh, it using the tab function to, to go through can be very much quicker to go through. You could hit return in some items to go through as well, but the tab is something that uh, usually goes the horizontal way and it's pretty much universal for 
most database programs. So instead of using the mouse, you may want to get used to doing that when we have to do things such as this. This uh, next piece will be the longest piece of data entry, and then we'll have less data entry after that. We're now going to save the changes. So I'm going to save changes. And we got four items have been saved. That is good. That's what we need. Next, we're going to do the uh, inventory parts. So we have these service parts. These are for uh, service items. Now we're going to select the drop down and we want to go to the inventory parts. We're looking for those, those parts of inventory, things that actually are physically sold, the guitars in our case. We will see a new sheet. Remember that, that the other sheet did not go away. And if you want to verify that, note that if you have the open windows open, as I suggest having all the time by going to the view tab and have the open window list here, then we could go toggle to the item list just to see that those items have been set up. So within our items list, if we were to go later on to the sales and then lists, we'll get this same list. And we can see now that we have our sales items here. Uh, our total sales, our tune-up, uh, sales tax, our tune-up here, partial service hour, and the diagnostic. Now we're going to go back. I'm going to toggle back to the screen that we were at. This is to add, edit, multiple items. We have our inventory parts drop down. We're going to do the same thing and adjust these titles to be the best we can do for the optimal input data for uh, this type. When it's going to have a couple more things we need because we're going to have to have the cost of goods sold as well as the sales price, the cost to us, as well as just what we're selling for. So we're going to go ahead and customize the columns once again. Back to the PDF will show us the columns that we want. So we've listed them here and we've listed them over here. So we've got the item name, the sales description, the purchase description, the cost now, the sales price, the cost of goods sold account, uh, the income account, the asset account, the sales tax account, quantity on hand these will be the items once again at the top on the horizontal once we finish this up in order to get something over here over to there which is the columns that will represent the horizontal columns we will then add them if something's over here that we do not want we will remove it and in order to adjust the columns in terms of uh, top to bottom and therefore left to right in terms of when we finish this we'll go the toggling up and down items here. When looking at QuickBooks, I've got the item name. Then we're looking at the sales description is what we would like. So the sales description is over here. I'm going to go ahead and add it. That will put it at the bottom. And then I'm going to move that up to, to the sec, uh, number two spot. So I'm, putting, I'm going to make it go all the way to the top and then down one. So we've got the item name, sales description. And then we need the purchase description. Once again, that's over here. I'm going to move that over. We're going to add that. I'm going to make it go all the way to the top because I can't see the top and that's just the fastest way. And then move it down to uh, the third item, purchase description. Then we have the cost. I'm going to go ahead and move that up one. And then we've got the sales price. I'm going to move that up one. We have the cost of goods sold account i'm going to move that up one we've got the income account that's right here i'm going to move that under cost of goods sold and then we've got the assets account is going to be moved up under the income account and then the sales tax code i'm going to scroll down here sales tax code it's going to be down a bit there it is okay sales tax code we want to move that up, so I'm going to move that up. We want it to be under asset account. So there's the asset account, so income account, asset sales tax code, and then the quantity on hand. So I'm going to go ahead and move that up under the sales tax code. And then we'll re remove these. Well, I'm going to remove this, uh, remove that, max, remove, uh, reorder, uh, here we remove and uh, there we have it. So this is the order that we got. We got the item name, sales description, purchase, purchase description, cost, sales price, cost of goods sold account, income account, asset account, sales tax code, quantity on hand. I'll give some description of that as we uh, go to the next screen. But when we do that, these will then appear at the top in terms of our headers of this data that we will then input. So we're going to say, okay, there it is. We've got the item name, 
sales description. So the item name, pretty self-explanatory. Uh, the sales description is going to be similar. The purchase description is going to be similar. And then we're going to have the cost. And that's the new thing that we're going to need when we sell inventory because we need not only the sales price, but what we purchased it for. I'm going to make it a little bit smaller because I don't think we need um, uh, uh, that big of a cost line. Sales price, that's what we're going to sell it for. So that, of course, will be higher than the cost. Cost of goods sold account, that's the income statement account representing the expense of us uh, selling something. I'm going to move over here with the toggle at the bottom. So I'm toggling over. We got uh, a sheet that's longer than one screen. So we're going to have to toggle over. So we'll mix, we'll minimize it as best we can to see as much on one screen as possible. And then we'll toggle over. And then we've got the income account. Uh, that's going to be the revenue account. So when we make a sale, we're going to increase revenue. And we're also going to increase cost of goods sold. And it, it, when I click down here, it populated cost of goods sold for us, guessing that that would be the account. And of course, that is correct. And then we're going to scroll back over here and say we have the uh, asset account. That's going to be where we store the inventory as an asset before we sell it. That's going to be an inventory asset account on the balance sheet. And then we've got the tax. That's going to be the, the tax code. And then the quantity on hand, how many we currently have uh, at this point in time, will be the quantity that we will have on hand. Back to the slide directions here. We're going to be putting this data into this information. Note that this would all be on uh, one row. So obviously this would go through one row and that would connect to the top row up top. We're going to put it on uh, two portions of this slide so we can see uh, zoom in a bit on this information. Give a bit of a description as we go through this information. Note that when we look at this top item, we have the item uh, name. That's just going to be a short name, kind of an abbreviation, so that we can get a quick look and not have to spell out the entire name. We do want the sales description and purchase description, those then being what will then be on the invoice when we make them. So uh, make sure to type those in there so they do uh, show up when we make those. Then we've got the cost. That's going to be what we purchased it for. That's kind of like the new thing here, the thing that's not on uh, the uh, when we have a service type thing. We don't have a cost. We just have the sales price. Then we have the sales price. That's going to be what we sell them for. Therefore, the sales price minus the cost is what the net income will increase by when uh, we record a sale of this first item. The cost of goods sold is going to be the cost income statement account. So that's the typical income statement account when we sell something, the expense of the inventory that we're giving up in order to help us generate this sales revenue. Then we have the merchandise sales. That's what we're going to call the sales account. So when we uh, record this 500 sales, it will go into merchandise inventory. The 400 then goes into cost of goods sold. The difference between the two, 100 is what net income will increase by. Inventory asset, that's going to be the asset account, and that's going to be on the balance sheet. So in this case, we're going to have one item of inventory at the 400 cost, one item of inventory at the 480 cost, and so on and so forth. And that dollar amount then will be listed on the balance sheet under inventory asset. And then we'll have the tax here, quantity on hand, that's how many of each of these items, each of these guitars we have. And then we're going to put this information in as of the date of 12 uh, 31 20. That's going to be basically the end of the year that we're going to close. And then we're going to start on January of um, the following year, on 21. Now, of course, we're working uh, at, at a date that's not going to be the current date. And the point of that is that we're, all, we're going to have to go forward in time. So we're going to have to have some other date. So we're not going to be working in the current date and so that's just the nature of these type of problems uh, so be aware of that as you input this data now we're going to input this data into the information note that as you do this you will have to do some toggling because not everything will be on the same screen back to quickbooks what i mean by that is note that uh, we're, we have um information we have this bar down here so if we go back to the start we're going to have to enter the information along here and then go all the way over to this side as we enter this data so it's best to have the slide in front of you and try to enter as you go and then use the tab function as you go. So I'll do the first line 
And hopefully I don't misspell everything as we go. So, and then I'm going to select tab, second line, epiphone, less hall, tab. And then I'm going to type the same thing, tab, for 400, tab, 500 sales price, tab, cost of goods sold already there, tab. We got the income account, uh, the income account, which is going to be the sales. We said merchandise sales, and that should be in there given if we selected the merchandise inventory account. And then we've got the asset account. They gave us inventory asset was what they guessed, and they're correct. Sales tax, we're going to have that. Quantity, we're going to say we have one. And then we need the date. And note that what I did is I did not include the date on the line item. So I'm going to go back to the custom columns, and we're going to add the date. So I've gone ahead and moved that over. I don't believe that was in the prior slide in the video. It will be in the prior slide uh, when you're when you're looking at it, when you're going through this. So your slides will have that input. Uh, I don't think this was scrolled down, so we couldn't see it all on one screen. But there it is at this point. We want to have the date there. It may not be uh, essential because if we don't have the date, it'll take the default date. But uh, we do want to note that working with these problems, we're typically going to be working in the in the future. So we want to be careful with uh, these date items. Date then will be the 123120 for this item. And then I'm going to go ahead and do the same thing for the rest of the items, just going through this and see what we have as we go. All right, I think we have everything in there as it is shown in the slide. So this is what it looks like at this point in time. Note that uh, your screen may differ a bit, but depending on the size of uh, each cell. Uh, so you can manipulate those just to uh, see what we have there. So I'm going to scroll back over here slowly. This is what we have at this point in time. Hopefully it looks like uh, what the slide looks like. And then once we're done with that, I'm going to go ahead and save that. So we're going to say um, save these items, save changes. Six items have changed. So I'm going to say, OK, six items are changed. That is good. Then I'm going to close this window. And that should take us back to the item list. If it does not, go to your open windows item lists or drop down list item lists. And you should then see those list of items. Now we've got our guitars in there. We've got our totals, our quantities here, and then we have uh, the price listed within the item list. If you want to just double check this information, you could go to reports up top to see where this will show up. Remember that we have these components on hand at this point, therefore they should be on the balance sheet. So if we go to reports up top, we can go and verify that. We're going to go to the company uh, financials, and we're looking for the balance sheet. Now, if it doesn't show up, remember you, you have to manipulate the dates and make sure we're in the same date range. That date range, 1231-20. Uh, and there we have our inventory items. Note that if we wanted to see more detail, we can drill down. We can double click on that or auto zoom is what they call it. And we could see these inventory items. These then are the items that we have just input. If we double click on those, we go back to these input tab. Now, note it's not going to go back to the multiple input screen. It's just going to show the one by one input item screen. But if there was an error, a problem, you can just drill down on it and we can adjust the amounts and the quantities as needed uh, if, there, if there's something that is not correct. If this item list does not look the same as this item list, then uh, we can go back and we can tie this stuff out and make it correct. Now, we, we're going to go ahead and print a report just to practice uh, printing the reports here as we go. And that's going to be this item list. So we're back to the list on this side, item list. We're going to go to the item at the bottom, select the drop up. Uh, actually, I'm going to go to report. So I reports at the bottom, select the drop up and or drop down. <laughs> well, the drop down is not being visible on the screen here. Let me fix that. We're going to scroll down a bit here. We're going to select the drop down and we got to go to item list. And here's the report. So that's kind of a quick report we can get to. Note that we could find that report in the report section and reports and find it there. But we just got a quick report. I'm going to go ahead and export this to Excel. Practice exporting. We could print it as well. 
Note that when we export it to Excel, then uh, it will go into a, uh, a formatted worksheet as we have looked at in the past. So we're gonna export to Excel. We're gonna create a workbook. And then I'm gonna say we want a new workbook. This is the first one. And I'm going to say this is going to be section, I'm going to call this section six. So I'm going to pull this back over. There's our workbook. And so we have this information. Now, if we were to print this, note that it is printing on this line. We'd want to fix that. I'm going to go to this and say item list. And then just go ahead and save that. I'm going to say file, save as, browse. And I'm going to put it on the desktop. And we're going to put it down here in our folder. I have too many things on the desktop. Get great guitars. And I'm going to put this in a new folder. I'm going to call it section six. This is where we're going to put that item and everything will be in that section as we go through these. So I'm gonna say save and features cannot be saved micro okay. And there we have that. Uh, so that's gonna be it for entering the items. Next in data input will not be as intensive as most of this. Note though that the items are the thing that really gives value because those are the things that drive a lot of the forms that we'll be working with within uh, QuickBooks.